Hey, Jimmy Murphy here with my co-host Marco D'Amico on the Montreal Hockey Now podcast. And we're glad to be joined by one of the best draft gurus in the world. Uh, he, you see his stuff on NHL.com. And I actually used to work with him. He used to call him a colleague back in the day. Uh, I remember all those early NHL.com days. And it's Mike Morial joining us. Mike, how are you? What's going on, Murph? Marco, glad to join the program. Murph, uh, always uh, always fun when we can get, uh, get chat and uh, talk hockey. I know we were... We were uh, together at the Carolina uh, yes. Boston series and in, in round one, so that was a lot of fun to see each other again and and uh, catch up a little bit. And how, how's how's my friend Sean Rourke doing? Sean is is Sean right? All I right, mean, he, he he's going to you know going to a lot of the refreshment stands and uh, he goes <laughs> to many of the eateries around town. And right now he's back doing his uh, editorial duty. Uh, back uh, back at home base in New York City. So, uh, you know, much now that we only have 14, well, now three teams remaining uh, yeah. in the playoffs, uh, Sean's doing a lot of the editorial uh, work, which okay. is a lot of heavy lifting, of course. Yeah. You, did you have to go and cover another round after? Uh... Yeah, well, they, they pulled me out of the bullpen for uh, St. Louis and Colorado. Uh, oh, so, fun. So I, I was yeah. able to do a few of those games. Uh, I was in St. Louis. Uh, so that was a lot of fun there. A real good series. Um, obviously, the Avalanche are it, – it's a lot of fun whenever you get a chance to watch them live. I mean, yep. seeing what they were able to do from the back end up, it, it, it's a lot of fun. So I, I was happy to, to get a chance to cover uh, yeah. the Avs. It's interesting. I was just writing about uh, Billy Huso uh, from yes. Montreal Hockey Now. Well, nice UFA. UFA, yeah. Yeah, a little <laughs> UFA goalie, which they might need to explore uh, yeah. if Carey Price doesn't come back. But let's get right to the draft stuff right now. And obviously, Montreal – probably out of any city in the NHL right now is the most draft happier draft buzz going around uh, with the number one pick overall. And, and just so many, what, 13 picks after that, Marco, is it? 14. 14. Like, I mean, you know, they, they have positioned themselves well. The fact it's in Montreal and the number one pick there, it's going to be something else less than a month away right now. But you were just at the combine right now. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, your take on, uh, what you heard about how they like Shane Wright and so, anybody else they might be looking at as well. Yeah, well, you know, guys, it's uh, obviously with number one, Montreal holds all the cards here, right? And and they're going to determine which player best fits their their situation, where they need to go. I counted uh, the last three drafts that Montreal has has drafted, I believe, seven or eight centermen um, in the past over the past three years, a total of 27 players. So that's a pretty high percentage, but we're still looking for that centerman, you know, that could be that potential number one, certainly a number two. Um, and I think in Shane Wright, you do have that number one guy. You know, we can all measure physical effort. You can see physical appearance. You can see physical stature when he's on the ice in the corners. But the thing about Shane Wright, can you measure the mental effort? And you can't. So all I know is this. He's a smart smart player you can't measure a player you know always being in the right spot how do you measure a player thinking two steps ahead to be in the right spot how do you think about a player that makes the high you know the right plays because his teammates can't execute that play at this point in time so all of those things are things that go through my mind when I think of Shane Wright and I watched him play major junior and doing all those things Shane so much makes plays that are team oriented um, that include his teammates. And to me, that's going to translate to the NHL with better players because better players are going to be able to take advantage of what Shane Wright's able to bring to the table. The one word, guys, that really bugs me, and I, I was talking to Craig Button about this too, TSN uh, draft analyst, um, you know, is the wow factor. Well, yeah, you know, Shane Wright, he really doesn't have the wow factor. You know, he wasn't really engaged this year. Well, you know, I know a lot of people, and we, we've talked about this previously, um, you know, Patrice Bergeron is a player that has been compared to, his, you know, Shane Rice been compared to a Patrice Bergeron just because of his two-way game. So how many nights or how many days have you seen Patrice Bergeron really pull you out of your seat? I mean, he exactly. just does so many things, the two-way game, the face-offs, you know, maybe, you know, helping out in the corners, whatever needs to be done on the ice at that particular moment, Bergeron gets it done. That's Shane Wright. 
Shane Wright's able to do those those type of things. And to me, guys, I I really do. And look, there are other great players in this draft. Yuri Slavkovsky, who we'll probably talk about. You know, you got Logan Cooley from the from the national team development program, two way centerman. The other thing about Shane Wright too, he's a right handed center. Not that it's the end end of end all, but it's nice to have a right handed shot, right handed face off guy out there in, in certain situations. So I think yeah, Shane I Wright to to me, I think Shane Wright to me is the right fit for Montreal at this point in time. Marco. Yeah, I mean, Montreal, well, Montreal already has right-handed Nick Suzuki uh, in the top six. So, like, at this point, you know, I, I was talk, I was listening about the the, the picks at center. And, and yeah, I, I 100% agree. I think that this makes a ton of sense. And when you start a rebuild, you usually build out from the center. Um, but, again, from what I've seen and from the conversations I had with Wright himself, it was always about being methodical, putting the team first, Um you know, he, he played for a rookie coach this year in Kingston and Luca Caputi, and Luca leaned on him heavily to kind of hold down the fort and used in a way that most first overall picks aren't used. And that's kind of the thing is like when when you know that you need to play a certain way so that your team can have success, well, you're sacrificing offense. And I think that that's a lot of what the problem is here is that a lot of the, the, the stat readers are looking at that. Whereas... You can do the exact same thing for a guy like Yuri Slavkovsky, who did really well internationally, just like Wright has done really well internationally in the past. But in Liga, eh, up and down, and depending on usage and who he was playing with, well, that's the exact same thing with Shane Wright. When Shane Wright was playing with Chromiak or Edmonds, oh, all of a sudden he's at a 105-point, 110-point pace. And that's what people focus on. But no one's going to really look at the fact that he was doing that whilst having to play like for his penalty kill and being double double covered every shift. That kind of play through adversity that you're already getting through at a young age, that's why I hold right slightly above Slavkovsky because it's easy to stand out when you're big and fast at the amateur level. When you get to the NHL level and everybody's around your size or everyone's around this physicality, well, that's when hockey instincts come in. That's when hockey IQ comes in. That's when knowing where you are on the ice comes in. And I think that's where you have the edge. And that's why I actually prefer a guy like Logan Cooley, for example, to a guy like Slavkovsky because that's another guy with elite hockey sense. And so like, this is why this top three is really interesting because we're getting a lot of comparisons to 2017. And, and frankly, I don't see it. I, I, I see maybe something along the lines of like what 2014 was where you had like Ekblad and then we didn't know what to do with Reinhardt, but then you had dry And then the rest of that draft kind of played out in a way where you had elite talent that was available later on. I think this is going to be similar with a lot of guys that, really are trending well but aren't being put up with consensus yeah yeah that that that's everything you said there marco is, is right on is right spot on you know the one thing i'll say too to add to that is the fact that you know one thing that kind of goes by the wayside with shane wright in addition to everything we just mentioned uh is the fact he he played six games in 18 months from march 20 yeah. until october 2021 so in that span, he played six games. So here's a kid that didn't really get, you know, that development, that development that you need at that second year. Because let's face it, he had a fantastic rookie year after gaining exceptional status, broke all kinds of records, uh, was named CHL Rookie of the Year, um, misses a season, plays U18s, and stands out at, at U18s. He did a real nice job as yeah. you know as a captain there, and then to come back this season and score just under a hundred points to me. I mean, that says a lot about his character, about the, you know, the hard work that he put in during the off season when there wasn't a lot of ice time with COVID, you know, all over the place. And he was able to get it done in that regard. You know, he, he had, uh, you know, equipment brought to his gym. He was able to get some ice time, whatever he did with his, with his agency through his agency. Um, so I give the kid credit. Uh, you know, he was able to get it done this year. Um, it, it might not have been, you know, statistically, people may say, well, we expected a little more, maybe a little more in the playoffs. But uh, to me, Shane Wright is a, is a top, is an elite player in this draft. And I think as a centerman, that's a guy that you just don't want to, you know, pass on if you have the number one pick. So there is a lot of, uh, comparables coming out right now, obviously because there isn't a conclusive consensus for number one for, for some folks, um, that 
he he has a similar kind of style or projection to that of a Nico Heischer. And, you know, I, I sometimes don't like to look at different draft years because 2017 in the QMJHL wasn't necessarily the same thing as, you know, 2021, 2022 in, in the OHL. But I think the, I think where the right differs from a guy like, like he sure is his ability to produce primary offense is his ability to be the guy that's going to take the fall so that the teammate can get the goal, be the guy that's going to make the crazy play uh, that you didn't see coming. And then boom, it's in the back of the net. And so that deceptiveness in his game, and you mentioned it before, how his game could possibly translate better at the NHL level than we're currently seeing it in the OHL level. That's exactly where I wanted to get at. So the aspects of his game that make him more centered to a structured pro game, as opposed to the dipsy doodle uh, unstructured junior style that we see, like this is why a guy like, for example, uh, Connor Bedard can run circles around folks in the <laughs> WHL because He's got all the physical tools and, and skills to be able to pierce through the lack of structure. Whereas a guy like Shane Wright is a guy that thrives within structure. And so I just wanted to get your take on how that, what kind of skills or what kind of aspects can you take or when you see from Shane Wright that could be translated to the NHL far quicker than a, you know, a full octane offensive prospect. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny you said that Marco and good points there. I, you know, and I always I always think of this, too. If Shane Wright were more selfish, he may have 50 goals and 140 points. You, you mentioned that he's always looking for teammates. He's always looking for the guy on his right or his left and, and when he's coming down the ice. I just think, you know, what he brings with his IQ and, and his smarts, what he – those intangibles. He's in, an intuitively skilled prospect who competes – and, and plays the game the correct way. He's he's a has a real high character, generates chances when needed, and is capable of being you know a difference maker. This is a guy. I thought it was real, real telling when he made an appearance right after the draft lottery on TSN, and he was asked, you know, do you feel you should be the number one pick? And he said, yeah, yeah, I I, I do think I should be the yeah, number one pick. Like and then that. they said, yeah. Don't any general manager, any scout Murph would wants to hear that out of a player. You don't want to right. say, well, there are a couple other good prospects, so I don't want to jump the gun here. No, not Shane Wright. Shane writes. Yeah, I do. I feel as though I'm the number one pick in this draft and I believe I've earned that. He said he earned it. Um, yeah. And, and Marco, I know. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going to say, and Marco, just quickly and we'll get back to you. Didn't, didn't you tell me that like some people on in chat rooms are saying, oh, he's chat he's, rooms. No, right? no, no. Some members of the media. Well, I'm calling he's talk, him arrogant. He's talking, like, oh, yeah, really? Talking, arrogant. Yeah, but well, well that's what I want. Thing. I'm picking a guy this number one. Better be confident. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the thing. Montreal hasn't had a first overall pick since Doug Wickenheiser, so like they don't know what it is to have a guy show up and, and just kind of be like, "I'm the man." Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm. I think I should be number one. Like, if you Slavkovsky was asked the same question at the combine, he didn't bat now. He said, "Yeah, of course I think I'm going to be number one." Right. No one said a thing. Not Why? The because Slavkovsky uh, is is the guy that's on the rise. It's not the guy that we've microanalyzed for the last twenty four months. Right. It's, that's right. It's, it's, that's it's, completely it's the difference. Yeah. So the, the when you look at a guy like that, and and you're not the underdog. You're not the guy that is you know on that rise. You're the guy that's been trying to hold down number one from the beginning. Listening to stuff like that, you're looking. People are looking for issues like that, and you know, in in, in a sport that is consistently like six templated answers when it comes to interview questions, having a guy actually just come out and say like, yeah, no, I think I deserve to be number one. is in fact refreshing because if you're going to play in Montreal, yeah, uh, you better have the cojones to say yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And you know what, you know what, at the combine too, guys, uh, he was asked flat out. And I mean, he, he was answering tough questions at the combine. You know, you think you go to the combine, you go before the media and they had six players on Friday, the day before the testing, you know, and, and Shane writes out there and he's getting questions like, well, Shane, you know, there have been some rumors your engagement this year hasn't been too great. Like, what do you say? Like, was that something that, you know, general managers and scouts are bringing up during the meetings? And he was blunt about it. He's like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I was asked about it and I just told him that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm out there. I want to give it the best I have every night. Sometimes you don't have 100 percent. 
I think any NHL player would actually say that. So mm -hmm. you don't have 100% every night. But he says, I'm very – he goes, those who know the way I play. I'm, a metho I'm kind of a methodical player. I like to think what's going on on the ice. I like to translate that into my play and, and, and how I'm going to make the next play. What's going to happen next? So that's what I'm saying. His IQ is beyond his years. It's his yeah. number one asset. He evaluates very quickly all over the ice and plays all situations. Strong skater, great puck uh, protection skills, high-end playmaking. But this is I'd a rather that than a wild yeah. factor, boys. I'd rather that uh -huh. than a wild. You know, yep. I mean, let, let's it let's depends. face it. it depends. Well, well, think about it, guys. But think. I know. I know Montreal. It's all about glitz sometimes. And well, no, that's that's it, actually the thing is that they haven't had that glitz in forever, yeah, right? I get it. But at the same time, I look at it like this. I mean, how many players are there? or have there been in the NHL that could have that wow factor every time they step on the ice, like a Kale McCarr right now. They're, they're generational. You're not going to get many of these all the time. Wow. Therefore, I don't want a guy trying, if he's not that guy, I don't want a, tr a guy trying to be that guy and too focused on show rather than doing what's right. And, and like you said, Mike, I think that's a great thing for a kid that age to have. What am I going to do with the next play? Where is the puck going to be? And always kind of sensing the next reaction he has to have. I mean, you're right. That's a that's a Bergeron thing. And as you've been talking about him a little, guys, I almost think, you know, I got to cover David Krejci a long time. And uh, that was uh, – you talk about methodical. He was a center that was very methodical, I, very pensive. And so I thought it helped him a lot. The irony is that when Montreal won the first overall pick, the joke was they're going to recreate Boston's top two lines because you're going to have Suzuki <laughs> – who's been compared to Krejci by, by Claude Julien, and then Shane Wright, who's been compared to yeah, there you go. Bergeron. So, I mean, that you already, get, well you already get the Boston management, Marco, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's becoming Boston North there. <laughs> I mean, geez. And you have Gordon already. As, yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. Maybe the writing's on the wall. But it's, it's looking at, and I think that this is the issue, is that there's such an anxiety because Montreal's draft record, especially with first-round picks, has been mm. – I'm going to stay polite, uh, difficult, um, over the last, I would nice. say, decade. Yeah, no, I have to. Um, so, uh, you know, when you look at a pick like this, you can't go wrong. And so it's being analyzed and analyzed and analyzed and analyzed. And really what's coming out right now is, you know, is there, in your opinion, a, div a, a significant difference between not just like, you know, like ability or whatnot, just top end potential. Is there a player outside of right that you would say has a higher ceiling? Not necessarily likelihood to hit it, but just a higher ceiling that could potentially go first overall. Oh, could potentially go first overall? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, Slavkovsky, after after Shane Wright, who I believe will be playing in the AHL next season, uh, Yuri Slavkovsky uh, of TPS and Liga, a Slovakian. Um, definitely has the goods. Um, you know, this is a player that's been compared to, to a Miko Rantanen uh, type of guy. Look, we all know what he was able – and we talked about IQ and smarts earlier, guys. I mean, to be able to play in the Winter Olympics, earn MVP as a 17-year-old, play world championships, do what he was able to do there, earn the trust of Craig Ramsey, who I respect tremendously. Uh, Craig told me – uh, when I was able to speak to him during the World Championships, he told me that Slavkovsky really reminds him a little bit of a Clark Gillies. So when oh, you boy. when you when you hear Craig Ramsey talking about a Clark Gillies, and he goes, "Yeah, you remember remember what Gillies was able to do with Boss and and Trotz on that line during their Cup years?" I, I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do remember." Um, so those are big time comparisons right there by a big time coach. Miko Rantanen is another player that a lot of the scouts when I was at the Combine kind of yeah. compare Slavkovsky to. Look, uh, he's a power forward. He uses his size, his reach, his strength, has very good on-ice vision, is tough to defend against. He plays smart. He's got that mature game. Excellent, excellent offensive instincts, and you see that when he's on the ice. Has that quick shot, that quick release. And it's surprise, and you've probably seen this, Mark. I don't know because yeah. you follow a lot of these guys. He's surprisingly mobile, right? For a big yeah. guy, he's mobile. He can get around the ice, and he's a pretty fast skater for his size. So I think he has all the tools needed for a great career. And I think the Devils are just sitting there going like this, 
you know, well, go ahead, go ahead, Canadians. Who are you going to take? Because we're taking the other guy. So that's basically yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I think the team with the easiest decision is not uh, is uh, not, not Phoenix, sorry, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. The Arizona is <laughs> just basically going to sit there and be like, okay, y'all fight. You figure out if you want to trade your, your second overall pick. Right. Like, we're waiting. And then we'll just take who's left. <laughs> but when you look at a guy like Slavkovsky, and I think that this is the thing that a lot of people are looking at, they're just kind of looking at, you know, comparing the international version of Slavkovsky versus the Liga version of Slavkovsky. And, and obviously there's a discrepancy in points, but not a discrepancy in style, not a discrepancy in effectiveness. Uh, a lot of his underlying numbers are the same across the board in all games. It's just that he was able to take advantage uh, of certain, you know, I would say certain lesser levels of defensive competition because Liga is a very good defensive league. Mm -hmm. Akin, you know, not necessarily the same case when you're playing like Team France or Team Great Britain uh, in the World Championships. So I think playing in a defensive centered league the way that he was and having to work his way up uh, impressed a lot of people. And by the end of the season, he was playing top six minutes uh, in Liga and in, into the playoffs. Um, and, you know, we saw today uh, someone actually ended up uh, posting that. Uh, he scored four goals in his last 10 games, um, you know, so he really kind of ended well. Um, when it comes to a guy like Slavkovsky's top-end ceiling, is it comparable in your eyes to a guy like Shane Wright? Is it is it potentially above? And we rank Shane Wright higher because he, we've known him longer, because he plays a position at center as opposed to winger. How would you go about, you know, differentiating the two? That's that's the that that's a good question, and I, I I gotta say it's like you know we'll have to see. I mean, as far as the ceiling goals, because let's face it, and we mentioned this earlier, you know, Shane Wright is a player that we've known about for the past you know three years since he was fifteen years old. We, we were talking about this draft being the Shane Wright draft. Then all of a sudden, COVID hits, right? So then all of a sudden, like the whole scouting you know, the, the years, the past two years, you're unsure of what's going on. You miss an entire season last year. International leagues were, were yeah. shut down. So it was like a whole wasted scouting season. So it was almost like Murph Marco, like we, we were starting off fresh again, right at the start yeah. of this year. So we needed to see these players. We needed to see what they, what they're capable of doing. Everyone knew about Slavkovsky, but we weren't sure what we were going to get. We knew Shane, what Shane Wright was about. We wanted, wanted to see him continue that. And he did, in, in my eyes, from Kingston. Slavkovsky came out of the gates, you know, full barrel. I mean, yeah. he, he, you know, in Liga, he was tremendous, earned the minutes. And nowadays, in ho hockey is played so much close to the boards, in the tight areas. So he's so strong there. I think that's what impressed the scouts, too, which makes him very valuable, you know, to any team. His shot is efficient can score the goals, has the release, accurate shots in tight areas. And, you know, I believe I believe there still is room to improve not only physically but offensively in what he's able to produce. I don't think we've seen, you know, right now the, you know, that level line for Yuri Slavkovsky. There's there's a lot more there. Is it going to be higher than than right maybe two, three years down the line? I don't know because I'm, I'm thinking of it in a way – uh, Marco, like Shane Wright's going to elevate his play each year. He's he's going to develop. He's going to mm -hmm. learn because he has an IQ, as is Slavkovsky. So if that's the case, I would expect Shane Wright to be the elite of this draft class. There we go. All right, we got to close her up. But before we go, and we know we were talking about it before we got on the air here, uh, you know, the question where uh, the Canadians were asking, uh, what animal are you on the ice? So I'm just going to I'm just going <laughs> to ask you, Mike, before we go. What animal are you? In the <laughs> I, Murph, I'm you know, and I was thinking about this last week too. I, personally, I don't know what you guys, how you guys would feel about this. I, I think I'd want to be an eagle, like, because I want to okay. be, I want to be the guy that like kind of swoops in there and just makes something happen, no matter what it is, a big hit or something, a goal or an assist, yep. and then just get out of there because I'm at the size where I'm gonna just gonna right. get. Leveled. I'm gonna be the hawk. I'm gonna be the yeah, hot. Yeah. It's looking ahead. I like would, right. I would normally look like the the eagle by default, <laughs> but um, I've been told that the uh, I would be the Tasmanian devil. Oh, nice! There you go. I like nice. that. I just, everywhere. Classic. Yes. 
Beautiful. Hey, Mike, we appreciate you joining us. I know you're short for time, so I'll let you go. But uh, always a pleasure, my friend, and uh, we'll see you at the draft. Thanks, Murph. Thanks, Marco. All right. Enjoy the playoffs. Yep. Thanks.